Previously on The Mandalorian Season 2, the Mandalorian Din Djarin acquired the Darksaber, and Grogu and the Mando reconnected, and Din removed his helmet in plain view of others, thus breaking his code. What did you think about this episode? Uh, so Season 3, Episode 1, I thought it was a 6 out of 10. Wasn't It was pretty good, but not the greatest ever. I really did like the sets and locations, thought they were very cool, very RPG-esque space battles and all kinds of stuff uh i <laughs> why were the pirates so upset about their bar being closed just find another bar yeah <laughs> uh pirates. the the space fight with the star fighters was really cool uh although it was a little unclear on the tactics uh and i'm still unsure about uh din's motivations to do a lot of stuff I know he's a Mandalorian and he wants to do Mandalorian things, but it seems like the Mandalorian way is kind of crumbling. So why adhere to it? So maybe we'll learn more. Overall, mm. six out of 10. What did you think? Funny you say RPG. It really felt like that. We were setting up a bunch of objectives that we're going to go through as we level up. And so one of our objectives is to bathe in the living waters of the Mandalore. And to, according to Jin's faith, he's, that'll 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 fix him of any wrongdoings he's done according to the, the code. And we're going to fight some pirates. Those pirates are going to be back. And we're also going to make sure that Grogu stays alive. Um, is Din going to be the new Mandalore of Mandalore? Is he going to effectively the president of the entire planet? Like he's going to have the dark saber. He's going to have walked through, bathed in the living waters. So there's going to be like so much legitimacy behind his claim to unite the clans and bring back Mandalore. Maybe. Um, also, Din is pretty cool because Bo-Katan is like she shits all over his religion and calls him a cult, or his code and calls it a cult. Like he's pretty like don't get angry like be fine it's fine <laughs> like like super chill about it you know speaking of objectives they did he needed the part to fix the the droid oh yeah and it's like a a sub quest on the way to the main storyline <laughs> he was even like a little guy in the hole in the wall like i have a quest for you <laughs> yeah so but i do agree that i think they're setting up that he becomes the mandalore of mandalore of mandalorians mm -hmm. of all time yeah the second coming of the great Mandalore. <laughs> Let's talk about this episode, season three, episode one. Let's do it. The Mandalorian. So, so cool. This is the armor with the stove. <laughs> the stove. Yep. Yep. I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> She's going to do some, I guess, not blacksmithing, some Beskar smithing. She mm -hmm. honestly, she's my favorite Mandalorian. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I mean, behavior is like very regal and like stately, and then mm -hmm. she like makes all the armor for everyone. That's I think she's the only one that knows how to smith the best car. Like a, that's an elite skill, and also cool helmet. Right. I mean, super elite skill, and probably extremely rare. Mm. But she has no taunts. Oh, this is the helmet she made. The helmet. Yeah, I thought this was gonna be a tiny little baby Grogu helmet. I was so hoping. <laughs> I was so hoping that he joins the children of the watch. <laughs> but oh, what was this? This is a this is one of the little calm things. And like like they press oh. the button and they can talk through it. And I saw something weird in there. I got it in a clip. We'll look at it in just a minute. Okay. And then this oh this is more sort of welding yeah, pieces together. Exactly. So this is some type of arc welding type of TIG something looking like it. And there, mm -hmm. she's she's working on that that radio, little little com. Oh yeah, she's like attaching it to the helmet mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Are those are those looking like good welds? They look pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, better be because that's gonna go into battle. Go into like battle, yeah. All right, let's bring up the the armor. The clippy. armor. She works quite hard. Here we go. Oh wait, wait. start from the beginning. Yeah. So focused. You know, I don't think she's hammered it enough times. Right, maybe it's just a little bit more. She'll do. She she does a little bit more. I had to cut it short because I was like, this is this is too much. Mm -hmm. But like, how often do you see someone work like that with such with such focus, such presence of mind? 
You know, it's like the Karate Kid when he's like sweeping mm-hmm. the floor. Like, so much intention. Such a cool character. Mm-hmm. So, she's working on this calm thing, but like, she welds it in. <laughs> Let's watch her do it. Mm-hmm. That's there forever. Mm-hmm. She, yeah, she's she's welded the comms device in there. If it ever gets uh, wet, ever gets damaged, like that helmet, you got to break it off. <laughs> you you can't undo a screw and fix it. I mean, on one hand, it's got to be battle like hard because Mando's fight hard. Mm-hmm. But like, if there's ever a problem, like you can't fix it. That's true because you can't detach it and put it back, right? And you can't detach it, fix it, and then put it back. You can't get a replacement. I guess you just have to go straight to her. But you can't take off your helmet, so you're screwed. You can't talk to anybody. Oh, yeah, job security, right? She's like, you can't. I'm gonna weld this in. You can't fix it unless you come back to mm-hmm. me. I wonder if they're allowed to take off their helmet and like leave their helmet outside and like just don't be seen. <laughs> and like she she comes by and picks uh, up the helmet for you. Oh, is it? You can't take off the helmet in front of others, but you can take off the helmet alone and like have a shower and stuff. Yeah, you got to be able to drink or whatever. Right? Yeah. Okay. I was also wondering. The sloppiness she has with the uh, connecting this solderer arcer Arc to well, the yeah. red piece parts mm-hmm, mm-hmm. seemed a little. Is it designed for that? Not not precisely centered. Mm. But maybe those are not like they're not electrical. Those are you know like when you buy stuff they'll they'll like melt the plastic so that you can't open it apart. Maybe it's that. Oh, it doesn't have to be precise. That. Doesn't have to be precise. She's just locking it in. Exactly. Oh. She's melting a little plug in place. <laughs> That's consistent with her not wanting a right to repair. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> She'll see like somebody's tampered with this. <laughs> like I'm not fixing this. Yeah, that's right. It's that little like sticker that you put on mm-hmm. electronics. If it's broken. Oh yeah, so this she's made this uh helmet for this kid. She's, the they're guy. like, you can never take it off. But his hair, what the heck? Should you shave his head first? Oh, no. There's, that's, you can just cut like a bowl cut on the bottom of the helmet. <laughs> just whenever it comes out, just cut around that. That's going to get nasty and smelly and gross. Mm-hmm. Well, you could just dunk your head in the water with soap, swish it around, and that's then true. sit back up. Drains and, then out. That, and then it drains out. And that water will never, will just dry in the helmet. It won't sit there and get gross. Yeah, I wonder if, I guess their helmets are just straight up like Beskar buckets. They don't have like fans built into it. That'd be pretty cool. They must have some kind of ventilation because that would get, that would become a moist mess up in there. That's right. And then it'll fog and then it's not combat effective. Yeah. Therefore, it must have a fan. Yeah. Armor plates. Here we go. Oh, yeah. So they get in a big fight with this crocodile looking guy, which, Mm -hmm. which, can we take a moment and say there's the crocodile guy looking guy but huge on a different planet like what a what a statement about the the, sh- the shape of a crocodile so good it evolved on different planets mm-hmm. that's very true ready let's watch him fight look where they put the explosives oh. on the armor plating on the outside of the armor plating like wh- what are you doing so so i thought are these explosives are they are they are there's i guess there's incendiary there's fragmentation and then shape charges and so i guess if these are shape charges maybe they had the thought like it's gonna like the outer casing the top casing is very hard and so it it shoots project it shoots fragments down into the crocodile but even if that's so like why wouldn't you just shove your hand in between the plates and drop it in there Maybe it's just get the explosives on the thing because it's it's completely it's a cluster F right now. So but even if it's not, be, if it's just anywhere on it, why didn't they go for the soft part like this this chunky leg here, this little drumstick? Throw the uh, throw the bo- the explosives on that thing, on that part. Maybe it's easier to stand on the back, so they're just like set it, forget set it, it, whatever, set it, forget it, pop pop. But they're but they're Mandalorians, so shouldn't they be a little more skilled? They should be a like more level headed. They should be like the best fighters in the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So they must be shape charges, but they were ineffective. Ineffective. 
Mm. I'm okay with that. If this is like shape charges and so like this is what they think it should work, then it just was not strong enough to this mm -hmm. uh, like this crocodile's uh, armor. Mm -hmm. But still, like assess what the weak spots are. True. The most jiggly things. Put the bomb there. Yeah, that's imagine something for plating. Was, imagine if it was underneath the armor plating. Just just wedged in between them. That's plating. Yeah, so they should they should fly up with a drill press and be like and then put the charge in. Wire it up. Fly away. Done. Yep. Easy. Yep. <laughs> Definitely not an electric hand drill. Get a nope. get a stationary <laughs> It's <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! I was also saying maybe they should reconsider the ceremony location. You know, I got I'm doing a ceremony, and there's you know, 300 ton wildlife that's going to attack the ceremony. Let's do it on top of the cliff. Yeah, or even just in the cave a little bit. And in, in the in the cave a little bit. That's right. a little bit. Yeah, because it's not going to be able to get its nose in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're about they're about twenty feet away from being safe. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I also have a clip about this battle, and yeah. so you pointed out that they put the shape charges on the armor plating, and I was like, they would like shoot these harpoons into this crocodile that's enormous, and they're like gonna trying to pull it. That's not gonna work. No not way. Chance. Not a chance. Uh, <laughs> What? what? Nope. 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 Why did they expect that to work at all? <laughs> they didn't even like anchor their ropes to rocks nearby. It's just no. just straight up there friction against the ground. Yeah. That's like playing tug of war with like 500 bulls. Well, you're not going to win. It's like playing tug of war with like a giant 300 ton alligator crocodile monster. You're not going to um, win. On a planet in the Star Wars universe, yeah. Exactly. You're not even it's on like... dry land. You're like in the edge of the water. That's like prime crocodile zone. It's true. Also, did it's totally. F Was this a Naboo fighter? It totally is. It totally it's is. Naboo. So he flies around. What's a Naboo fighter? He's, he's like, he's in the cockpit. Naboo, yeah. Boom. Why that was effective, not the shape charges or whatever they were. I guess because they hit him that. on the side. And also, it's a starfighter. Like, they shoot bigger things. I guess so, yeah. Uh, I don't remember I don't remember season two that well, but I don't remember him, him having a Naboo fighter. I guess that's what he has now. His new buff, Naboo fighter. Mm -hmm. Here he is uh, getting out. Getting out. There's a new Naboo fighter. There's a little cockpit bubble where Grogu will be. And mm -hmm. I took this picture because these are the remaining children of the Watch. This is this is what's oh, left yeah. of their group, of their clan. Mm -hmm. This is it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Also, so the big guy on the left, I forgot his name. He's the only one with like a... This guy? Uh, no, no, no. One more to the right. Next oh, to this, the... This uh, guy. This yeah, guy. next to the... Yeah, yeah. He, he was in season one and two. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if the other ones were except for the armor. I guess they may have been. Anyway, um, he's the only one that has like this, this like belt-fed Gatling handgun, minigun. Mm -hmm. um, why don't other people have it? Don't Felix they all have their? Like, they all have their own weapon of choice, and that's his because he's the big guy. Oh, I guess so. Okay, okay, okay. Buy that. Maybe someone else has got like a bazooka. Mm -hmm. The guy in the back seems to have like on the back left seems to have like a standard. They're the flag mm -hmm. carrier. They just they have their favorite weapon, and the situation determines nothing. They just use that weapon every time. I mean, I mean, look at the armor right now. She's carrying her forging weapons. Like, <laughs> what are you doing, getting in a melee fight with a <laughs> crocodile? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they didn't know the crocodile was going to be there, but still. Where's her sign up? She said, yeah, Kroku in the back. Super cute. Yeah. Super cute. And this little did Naboo starfighters. I guess this is for a droid. Right. So it didn't used to be it didn't used to have a dome like when when little when young Anakin was in a star in a Naboo fighter with R2D2. R2D2's head's just like hanging out. Hanging so I out. guess they must have put a dome on it for Grogu. I see. This is like custom. Mm. Much it's custom. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was wondering what 
they're in hyperspace mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now and i was wondering mm -hmm. how does this work they're just in are they they're in a different dimension and they're traversing regular space through well they're not traversing regular space they're going through a separate dimension to get to one from one point to the to another point in regular space is that right sounds like sound, sounds good okay and we get this illumination and then there was these strange creatures yeah like, like space whales in hyperspace mm -hmm. and space whales, Gro space Gro grogu was like connecting with them so well maybe that's going to come up mm. later i have never heard of such things in the star wars universe so this is new yeah i nor have i mm -hmm. yeah i really thought that they were going to start a battle but i guess they're friends <laughs> i think they're friends so this is the place that they land at with, uh, what's his name? The chief magistrate? Mm -hmm. Grief. Grief. And yeah, this is the super RPG town. You got the landing bay with all the different ships. You know, then you go over here. You got the town's place with some vendors and people, NPCs walking around. <laughs> and then you've got the, the leader place where you're going to go get your missions. I mm -hmm. mean, it's mm -hmm. RPG for sure, right? I mean, life is an RPG. Yeah. This guy is basically C-3PO, but white. Like, yep. see white 3PO? Look, at, the, look yep. at this. I mean, he's exactly C-3PO, but white. Isn't he but a he, standardized model? They can be painted anything they want. Uh, I guess so. He's guess like a, so. he's like a standardized communication droid, translation droid. Mm -hmm. But instead of any color, you're straight up white. Straight up white, because he he's like a ghetto ass tall geese, like mm -hmm. just just <laughs> white mech, just just plain white, but like no weapons at all. This three PO is like he's gonna get killed in a fight. Well, this guy talks his way out of situations, and this guy fights his way out of Boxes situations. Mm, that's true. Which would you rather be, a t one who can talk yourself out of any situation, or someone who can fight your way out of any situation? Uh, this guy was like the leader of the entire army. He had a lot of political power. That was pretty cool. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. So he's he's everything and he's he's pretty good. White three PO is nothing. He's all right. He's all right. He's <laughs> better than the train face three PO that we see later. Oh yeah. Yeah, this guy's three PO. Yeah. Although he's a quick thinker, we'll get to that. That's true. Anything you want to say about this? Oh yeah, yeah. Look at this door. This one over here? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm okay with the top having little corners. Fine. Yeah. Whatever. Stylus's choice. But the bottom, the bottom, that's just trip hazard for no just reason. Just trip hazard. Yeah. Just, just trip hazard. So walking through side by side, two abreast, and a trip over this. Yep. Or even like me, like I walk through doorways, like I'm not going to walk through the dead middle every time. I walk through out of the closest, but I'm looking for like my shoulder width. I'm not expecting like a little trip hazard on the floor. Sure, yeah. Why do, why do yeah. this? Yeah, so it should be maybe this for style. For style, sure, it should go s straight down. Mm -hmm. Maybe even the top corners are for like structural. You get a little mm -hmm. little little corner in there, but the bottom. I think this. I think the solution is when you walk through the door is to not fuck it up. Yes, <laughs> and <laughs> and. Uh. If you don't so fuck it up, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yep. This is another uh, shot of uh, his office. I was just, you know, it's super nice. Super nice. Yeah, it's little control panels. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. They look like they got good tactile feedback. He's got a little got geode there. Likes he likes the little crystals. Okay. Little geode. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's got this globe lamp. Oh. We call it. Ooh. How cool is that? I want one now. Mm -hmm. He's got this little map projector. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, he's got this dis map display on the wall. Mm -hmm. Finely Cause, constructed chair. Because it always be tactical. ABT. ABT. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, yeah. yeah he's so taking care of the planet. Yeah. He's uh, setting up his buddies with jobs. Listen to this. I can set you up with a prime tract. You and the little one, you can settle down. You can hang up your blaster. Live off the fat of the land. All right. This guy's got power and he's like, you get a job and you get a job. And hey, I'm friends with you. You get a job and you get a job. 
not only a job, he offered him a tract. He offered him yeah, a tract of yeah. land. He's Hell like, yeah. yeah, I'm going to make you the marshal, and here's just land you can have because I like you. And it's not just land. It's also a great life because it's got resources and stuff mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. it. It's mm-hmm. viable land. Heck yeah. Mando, do this. Yeah, do it. So this is what I was talking about in the review. Was he unsure about Mando's motivations here? This is a pretty solid offer right here. Is it a cult? Because this is a really good offer. This is like take care of you and Grogu for the rest of your lives. Yeah. But he's like so focused on dipping his toes in this water. He's given it up. Because he's like Mandalorian cult. Mandalorian. I mean... He should at least think about it unless he's so brainwashed that maybe it's a call. I know. What an offer. Yeah. So this is the pirate that's upset that the bar was turned into a school. Like, why? Why? He needs to play the long game and teach those kids to become bartenders. That's... I was thinking just take your little... Take your little self down the street to the bar. To the, to the the other bar. <laughs> Why yeah, does it have to be this building? What What is this, a 24-hour school? Just wait for the school to get out, and then you have a party in the gym. Hey, if, I bet you the chief magistrate, what's his name again? Grief? K- Grief Cargo. Grief Cargo. You play ball, if you're yeah. reasonable. Yeah, making a little casino night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why, why are we doing this? It's like he doesn't understand that sometimes buildings change tenants. Yeah. What a weirdo. What a weirdo. Oh, yeah. So this is uh, up in his office again. Up in the Grief's office. And they're uh, repairing that uh, super dangerous droid. I was like, what kind of screw up is this? Let's watch. Yeah. Wild. Right. As a tweet terminated. Oh. We're blasting the action. Rose Rose. Rose Rose. Rose. Busted. using your head. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that when I was the show. Oh, you didn't? No, no, no. Because I, because I was thinking busted. Because yeah. he dropped that bust on him. He just a bust. Yeah. That this droid right here. What a quick thinker. Quick he thinker. cowered in the corner. He's like, wait, I have tactical opportunity, and he takes advantage. Now that's you using your head. As a t- and just Ingenious. and Ingenious. in the clutch delivers. He's on it. But what a screw up. Like, what are they doing? That's Repairing this droid in the office without any contingency plans. It turns on as hostile. Grogu almost dies. They're throwing Grogu across the room. The thing won't die. Like, what are they doing? I didn't even try to tie it down. Get some straps. Oh. Strapped. He's strapped at all times. <laughs> that's right. Be strapped as in have a firearm at all times. It's also be strapped in the sense like carry some straps on you just in case you need to repair a violent droid. Yeah. Bumper yeah. falls off. Strap it back on. Hit the road. Mm-hmm. Always have straps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is the the little tech guy's house, the apartment. Yep. That's where they live. And I really like this door shape <laughs> because it's so mm-hmm. practical. It's so practical because <laughs> like you get a carrier that comes in that has all your stuff. It's just, your opening's a square. What I don't like, if it ever rains here, all that water's running right into their shop. Maybe they have some drainage solution that's we're unaware of. I see a little gully here, or is that just for the door? Uh, I guess the, the door is a little bit further, but, but, but even like if you have a little gap there so that water can come in and like fall into the drainage, just put your floor higher up then you don't have to worry about that at all mm. yeah hopefully it never water never doesn't accumulate yeah yeah i mean so these guys are super smart but mm, they couldn't get a little little bit you know four inches taller property mm-hmm. bummer i was also upset at, um he was just attacked in the streets by the pirates and he's like kneeling down turning his back to the people does he have guards i hope so Hmm, interesting point. He did right win now. the fight, though. <laughs> they killed four of them. But, but only because Mando was standing behind him. Mando is now in this little room. <laughs> in the box. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So he explains some of the dials and stuff in the cockpit. 
Let's see. This here is your hyperspace map. You determine your range by looking at your fuel gauge. And this is your enemy proximity warning indicator. Whoopsie daisy. Whoops. Yep. I mean, his fuel gauge is, is literally a maxed fuel gauge. Out. Yeah. It's maxed out. Well, it's maxed out, but there's no um, distance. He said determine your range, Ooh, but this is a right. fuel indicator, not a range indicator. That's right. He needs to know the efficiency of his vehicle at all times, even though it'll grade. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yep. And then cool there's the dogfight, and the guys are right up on him. So that that thing, that um, the proximity and proximity indicator, allowed them to get quite close. Oh, yeah. So look how close they are. I mean, they could have taken shots already. Taking shots the only already. reason they haven't is because they want to talk. Okay, what did the twirly business do? How's that help? Oh, it's a good move. It's a good move. Does that yeah, this, this is a the probability of, of attack of a This is a straight up hit? Phantom Menace reference. Like like <laughs> Anakin's like, I don't know what to do. Oh, spinning, that's a good move. And he like spins and perfectly <laughs> dodges everyone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Mandal uh what's his name? Well, the Mandalorian. Dan He's not yeah, force Mando. sensitive. Yeah, I mean you still spend send the spin. Throws send off the, the targeting. Didn't get but, shot. But you're not altering your cross section. You're just re or you know, putting it in different locations. It's it's so yeah, if they're gonna sit, hit the center of the ship, then wouldn't matter. But if they were aiming for the engines, well now those are spinning. And if they missed, they would now hit. <laughs> <If they're, laughs> that's right. <laughs> Why do they play so close to the asteroid? Whoa. 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 So coming up here, the Mandalorian somehow is able to like they're they're chasing him, and somehow he's allowed he's allowed, ee, he's able to stop really fast, and then start again and kill people. He does it twice. Let's watch. So he kills one of them. So now they're like, where is he? Where is he? Why don't they have that? Yeah. He's fine, he's fine. He stopped! He stopped. Where is he? He stopped. Get some. He's flying again, real fast. Suddenly Stops. fast. Now he's out, he's in the glass! So, he was... He was fast, stopped. Sprung the trap, was moving fast again, stopped. And then sprung a second trap. The performance of this vehicle is incredible. I'm okay with it going fast, but accelerating that hard? Holy cow. Also, I don't think Groku has a seatbelt back there. Like, that kid's head is getting hit against the little dome guy. Like, both the so, front and the back when he accelerates. So, it must be that they have some kind of artificial gravity that counteracts the acceleration. So, if you're going to do a 8G, back, uh, 8G acceleration backwards, then during that you provide that 8G on the entirety of your body through artificial gravity and you feel nothing. Ah, so you're saying if the, if everything can accelerate uniformly, then you don't get the force of the chair on your back. Actually, mm -hmm. that would crush you uh, because you just mm -hmm. your whole body is being moved together. That means even like even your organs are being moved with this artificial gravity. Yep. Interesting. I guess so, so. That's super advanced, but. That's really one, the only way that I can think of that they can actually slow down so rapidly. Yeah. Otherwise, they should mess themselves up. Just, just, rip, just bash themselves against the windows. Certainly, Grogu would be because he's not even strapped in. Not even strapped in. So, the next part is Mando. <laughs> he has done these amazing tactics, and then all of a sudden, he gets outclassed by the leader. Amazing tactics. So he's killed everybody. There was like nine ships or something. He's killed everybody. Then he gets outclassed by the leader. Whoops. Surprise. 
Yeah, 9v1, no problem. 1v1? Mm. Mm. I'll get Eat lured it. into a trap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he gets lured into this trap, and the target lock isn't even effective. He gets target locked by this big ship. And then... Oh, and then he just blows... Yeah. He just blows right by it. Ready? Dang, Ferric. They have a target lock on us. Boop. Single, single button. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. <laughs> target fogged. Never had a chance. What? What the heck? Why wasn't it ever effective? Okay, so he escapes the dogfight, escapes the pirates. He lands at... This is a Mandalore, but it's a Mandalorian castle. Mm-hmm. I don't know which... Yeah, I don't know which Mandalorian planet, but this is bo castle. And he lands it. It's raining. Doesn't close the canopy. I didn't even notice that. That's right. His seat's going to be wet. What and is he doing? There's advanced electronics and stuff in here. It's gonna be flooded. That's right, and and he's missing panels, so like all of his. Oh boy! Yeah, and there may even oh be like boy. asteroid debris just hitting that while he was flying around. Oh, it should be battle damage. Oh my gosh, the engine doesn't even have a cowling. Nope. Oh, this needs to get inside immediately. I thought like I, I didn't know why he just didn't turn his ship a little bit because he's got to walk around that that little protrusion. I don't know what that's called. But, like, imagine if you've got to get back into the ship quickly. He's got to mm-hmm. hop over the thing. Just turn your ship a little bit. Turn your ship a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's true. Why not? Yeah, close have, your have canopy. it face outward. Yeah, and close your canopy. Maybe he also needs one of the... You know those covers you have for, like, cars to protect mm. it from the sun and the rain? He needs one of those. <laughs> he, he, like, lands a ship. He, like, takes out this, this like, stretchy fabric and, like, covers it up. <laughs> This is the castle. Mm-hmm. This reminded me of Forerunner architecture. Yes! And I just grabbed a screenshot somewhere. This is mm-hmm. Forerunner. Yeah. From, I think, Halo 5? It's like a Looks simplified, less less unnecessary, like more just straight down to it Forerunner, forerunner building. Yeah. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. bo she is intimidating she she is intimidating to me like she's so relaxed but also like fierce fierce language like i was feeling it for for mando here like i i felt like he would be under stress i felt like he was so under stress that he just started sweating like through his helmet like like you know like when you're like presenting you're like oh stress and like sweat that's what this guy's getting is she just chilling on this throne all day long She's like, I rule this place. Mm -hmm. I will sit here all day. Nobody comes. Doesn't matter. I'm on the throne. Yep. I guess so. Okay. Yeah, what would you do if you had a castle? (laughs) (laughs) Sit on the throne all day? Yeah. (laughs) I guess. Mm. Soak in that power. And that is it. That's the end of season three, episode one of The Mandalorian. We'll see what happens on his various fetch and escort quests. All right. See you next time.